Hi everyone, welcome to the third part in our video series about how to install our oversized tire fitment kit. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to install our body mount relocation kit. So this kit consists of a few components, I'm going to show you those right now. First of all, we have our steel mount that welds to the frame and replaces the OE one, bracing plate that goes with it, rubber bushing kit with bolt and sleeve and all hardware necessary to install it. So installing this portion of the kit is definitely the most complex part of the entire oversized tire fitment kit. This is going to require lots of cutting um, with grinder and pre preferably a plasma cutter if you have one, welding, different types of assembly required for the entire process, and uh, lots of safety concerns just to be aware of if you haven't done a whole lot of fabrication in that type of work before. So something to keep in mind is that you will have to have a little bit higher skill level when it comes to some custom fabrication because you will be cutting the entire steel mount off the frame of your truck and welding on a new replacement mount. All right, so we're getting started with installing the body mount relocation kit. One of the first things we need to do is take apart a couple little things on the interior so we can get to the body mount bolt and then we can be able to remove it. So we're gonna start with taking the floor mat out First, so get that out of the way. And then we need to take this little kick panel off here. Let's pull straight up on that. And then this panel needs to come off next. There's a little plastic like threaded nut all the way up here, right past this little foot block. Right up in here, you grab that little plastic nut and unthread it. It just comes off of a stud there. And then you can pull off to the side and then back on this piece. Next, we need to pull up the carpet. Get that out of the way. And then there's this foam block for the foot pad here. It has these two little plastic, kind of, they're like a two piece thread together clip and they're not really removable. You can't spin them off or anything like that. So you kind of just have to grab this block and pull on it and just pop it out of there. And it does, typically pulls the foam off the bottom of this, but there's really no other way around doing that. So you gotta get that out of the way. And then we pop this plastic cover off here, pull that out of the way. Now we have access to our body mount bolt. <clears throat> Now we need to go down on the bottom side here with a 17 millimeter socket, spin the nut off of that bolt. Uh, this bolt is actually captured in the body. There's two welded tabs in there that should prevent the bolt from spinning. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the nut first. Okay, so I have my impact and 17 millimeter socket. You can see this bolt hanging through the body mount here. We need to remove the nut from that bolt. Sometimes if that bolt It'll pop up out of those little retaining pins in there. You'll need someone to help put pressure down on the bolt and hold it in place while you spin the nut the rest of the way off. So you've got the nut and the large washer off the bottom. You can pull this bolt completely out. You will no longer need this bolt. We'll be replacing it with a different one. Now you wanna go ahead and do that on both sides of the truck. Um, and just, it's easier to do it now before you have the truck on jack stands or up on a car hoist. Okay, so we have our truck all on our car hoist. And before you left the truck up in the air, you wanna make sure that you disconnect your battery because we are going to be welding on the truck and you don't want your battery connected while you're doing that. Okay, we've got our truck up in the air. We took the wheel and tire off again so we have access to our work area. So we need to start removing the body mount from the frame. Now this can be a pretty in-depth process. A lot of things to watch out for as you're cutting and getting in there. Um, just using your angle grinder and stuff, it's a pretty dangerous location especially if you're underneath the truck working, you wanna be careful that that thing doesn't get bound up or stuck anywhere and doesn't jump back at you and cause, uh, cause an injury. So what I like to use, obviously most people are not gonna have access to this unless they're taking their truck to a shop. Plasma cutter works very well to get into a lot of these spaces where you can't fit a grinder. Um, so this works well to get in and start cutting the body mount apart. You kind of have to section it and just take it apart piece by piece until you can finally get through the whole thing. Um, there are a few things to watch for. Of course, you don't want to um, 
throw hot sparks and, and flames and stuff into the body too much because it can start some of this rubber sealant on fire on the bottom side of the body. So always be aware of that. The driver's side we're using as an example here because this side has a large wiring harness that's right in the way of where you're going to be working. So you also want to be mindful of that, that you don't melt or cut through any of your wires. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and there's a couple clips that hold that wiring harness down onto the frame. I just kind of use a pry bar to pop that up and at least get it loose so it can be mobile and you can help get it out of the way while you're working. So you can see that there's kind of a plastic rectangular case around this wiring harness that goes in between here. You just want to get your pry bar underneath that and push up on it and it'll pop that plastic piece out of the frame. So there's a clip on each end so you kind of need to get under this side and do the same thing over here as well. Once they're both popped out of there, and you can see this wiring harness is a little bit more mobile. Next, we're going to peel back this uh, splash guard, and there's a screw behind there that'll loosen the bracket so this harness can move around a little bit more. So right in here, it's pretty difficult to see, but right below these fuel lines, behind this plastic area, there is a bolt right here. You can barely see the head of it. That's gonna be a 12 millimeter wrench. We can take that bolt out, then this whole plastic piece will be loose. Once that bolt's been pulled out, now you can see that this is definitely a lot easier to move around. We'll just kind of let it sit there for now and we'll show you where to move it out of the way later. Before we start cutting, there's one final thing we need to do. We need to actually lift the body up about a quarter inch higher than where it wants to sit right now with the OE body mount in place. We've discovered that the aftermarket body mounts, once you tighten everything down, the body settles down about a quarter inch. So we want to pre-lift it above that point so when it settles a quarter, the whole body will still be level. So what I do, I use a really big pry bar and I can st stick it in between this body mount and the body here and you can actually lift the body. So what you want to do, we kind of use, most of the trucks we work on have rock sliders and we use that as a point of measuring. So say this gap right here from the pinch weld to the slider is one inch. You're going to want to lift the body up a quarter inch and then put in a spacer or something to hold the body in that position at one and a quarter inches of height. So if you don't have rock sliders or something on your truck to do that with, you need to just get the vehicle in a position where you are comfortable working on everything. You won't be moving the truck and then use jack stands or something else to actually lift the body and hold it in place. Okay, we are ready to start cutting our body mount off the frame. I have my plasma cutter here ready to go. Um, the process is somewhat similar, whether you have plasma cutter or grinder cutoff wheel. Um, I basically start going up the side here, cut along the top of the mount and kind of get this side piece removed. And then I go along around this bottom edge here and then again, reach up inside here and go down the back edge. So I'm kind of removing sections at a time, side, bottom, side, everything until you all you're left with is just this top plate with the wiring sitting up here. Once you have just that piece remaining, then we'll deal with getting the wiring out of the way so we can make the final cut all the way through the mount and get it off the, the frame. Um, so no matter what you're using for cutting, especially plasma, these make a lot of really big, big globs of molten steel. Um, so make sure you've got plenty of protection, safety stuff. I use my welding hood on the cutting mode just to protect face and stuff from it splashing back at me. So. Um, definitely be very conscientious of safety when you're working on this kind of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the cutting.
Uh, one other thing definitely to be aware of, if you're using plasma cutter, these can easily blast holes right into the frame if you're getting too close to the frame when you're cutting. So just keep a good distance away from the main part of the frame as you're cutting through all of these pieces. Also, you have a rubber body mount inside of here and this particular truck has some extra rubber undercoating on the frame as well. So that stuff definitely likes to catch fire really easily. So make sure you have a uh, fire extinguisher available if you need it should something uh, start on fire. So I like to keep a water bottle on hand just so that I can spray this steel as I'm cutting through it because this entire piece gets really hot and if the wires are laying on top of that steel, even if you're not cutting in that area, it can get hot enough to melt through the plastic and the rubber coating on those wires. Um, so I use the water for that and then you can see that I've cut away the sides of the body mount all the way around, removed the bottom plate and now we're getting close to when we can cut the remaining portion off. So in order to do that without cutting into our wiring harness, usually what I do is I get a grinder with a cutoff wheel and then I'll get it up from underneath behind this wiring harness and start to cut through from the bottom side of the frame to get this piece off. So I moved the wiring harness back that way as far as I could kind of pinched it between the, the body and the frame. I have bungee cord holding it that way as far as possible. And I've cut out as much as I can here with the plasma. Now I'm going to get underneath with the cutoff wheel on the grinder. And I'm gonna take this and go up through the bottom side right here all the way across, being careful not to get into that wiring harness anywhere. And once I cut all the way through that remaining piece, this whole entire body mount will fall off of the frame and then we'll be ready to clean up everything that's remaining. Okay, now that I've gotten this upper portion of the body mount removed from the frame, I pulled the harness back the other way out of the way with a bungee cord to hold it. Now we have plenty of room to work around this area and cut off the remaining portions of that mount. So I'm just going to keep working at cutting all these pieces and then once the big pieces are out of the way, I'll be sanding and grinding down everything so it's nice and clean and all of that remaining pieces are taken off of the frame. All right, so we have everything all cleaned up on the frame rail. The whole, all the welds have been sanded down. Everything's nice and clean and ready for the new parts. I'm gonna show you real quick uh, next couple things we need to do here to get ready to put the new mount on the frame. So um, one of the first things we need to do is this uh, washer with the two little tabs on it will come in your hardware pack. This needs to get welded to the head of the bolt. So this is what's gonna lock your bolt in place and keep it from spinning when you put the new body mount bolt into the, the cab. Um, so you don't have to weld it solid all the way around, but a couple welds, like one on each side would be fine. Get that welded onto each one of those bolts and then that bolt will be ready to go. <clears throat> and then we're gonna wanna assemble our body mount with the bushing and everything so that it's ready to put on the truck and slide up onto the bolt underneath the truck. <clears throat> so this is the bottom portion of the bushing. You can see it has this large uh, thin sleeve right here that fits through this hole. So as we're holding the mount here, this is the top of the mount. This is going to be the bottom part, this open area here. So we want to take this lower bushing piece with the sleeve, put it up through the bottom just like that and make sure that that sleeve goes all the way up through the hole. That's a very important part. So uh, we want that all the way up in there. And then this top bushing has a larger hole on the bottom that's made to fit around this sleeve here. So that's gonna go on top. And then we have this gold sleeve that goes through the middle of everything. So that's how you're going to assemble the new mount and that's ready. We're gonna take that over to the truck now and hold it up into place and uh, slide it onto our bolt and show you what to do next. All right, so we have our body mount ready to go back onto the frame here. 
Um, Jake's inside the truck and he's just holding the bolt in place for us so that it doesn't go up when I push the body mount on. So this one here is the driver's side mount. It has this long leg that's going to face towards the back of the truck. So we're going to go ahead and orient it that way and slide it on. So you want to put one of these big gold washers on first that comes with the mount. Slide it up onto the bolt. Set the other large gold washer on underneath. And then you can put your nut on. Now we don't really need to tighten this bolt all the way. You just need to get it snug enough to hold everything together and put some pressure on that sleeve that's inside there and hold the body mount in place. So once that's tightened, you could turn it a couple times with a wrench and that would be plenty. That's going to hold our mount in place. And then once that's hanging there in position, we need to orient our brace plate that goes onto the frame here. So this has a couple of little bend lines on each end. You can see this side is a little bit longer. It's about an inch and a half long compared to this side. It's only about an inch. We want to put this longer end towards the front of the truck. So we're going to take this plate, slide it up behind the body mount. And we're just going to line it right in there so it's up about a half inch or so from the bottom of the frame rail along the bottom here nice and parallel with the bottom of the frame and about an inch back from the edge of this uh, rectangular hole where that plastic cap is. So once you have that in place, you can tack the corners of this plate so it stays on the frame. So we have our bracing plate tacked in place here. I just put one tack on each corner. Um, the reason we put this body mount on is just to kind of visually inspect and make sure that everything looks like it's lining up nicely with this plate and that it's set in position properly. Um, so we don't need the body mount on there anymore at this point in time. We want to remove it again so that we can weld all the way across the top of this bracing plate back here and pull our wires out of the way so we have plenty of room to weld around this plate. So you can go ahead and remove this nut, pull your body mount off and pull the bolt out so everything's out of your way and then that plate can be fully welded onto the frame. So I have the frame brace plate all completely welded onto the frame um, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the body mount back on in place. We kept the wiring harness pulled away from the frame just because this is hot right now we don't want it to rest against the frame and melt any of those wires. So I have a bungee cord pulled against that. Uh, so we got our bolt back in place, he's holding it in for me. I'm going to put the big washer on first again and then slide the body mount into position. Large washer on the bottom and then the nut. So we want to just tighten it down enough so that everything is compressed together. This isn't wiggling around at all. And then you just want to make sure that sometimes you have to tap on this mount up or down so that there's a nice even reveal all the way around. And it's make sure it's not wedged against the frame at a weird angle and you have a gap to weld. So you just want to make sure that's sitting really nicely on that plate we just welded on. Then you can go ahead and tack weld your mount in place, one on each corner. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the bolt out and remove the bushings and all the rubber from the mount so we can weld it without any of that stuff getting hot and melting. So we've got our mount all tacked onto the frame here and we're going to get our rubber bushing out. So first we need to pull this metal sleeve out of the center. So we're going to take that one out and then we need to get the lower half of the bushing out of the mount here. Usually a screwdriver works to kind of get in there and pry down on it. There we go. So pull that piece out and then we got to get this metal sleeve out of there too because that's going to prevent this upper portion from sliding out of the mount. Come on. There we go. Just take the thin sleeve out. You can go back on your bushing there. 
And now we just need to get the pressure off of this upper bushing so we can get it out of there. I just put my pry bar back in between the frame and the body, lift a little bit, and we can slide this one right out of there. Now everything's out of the way, you can go ahead and fully weld this mount. You're going to want to do the inside as well, all the way around. Uh, once that's finished welded, there's one more piece that's going to go on the bottom. We'll show you that after this part's all welded up. All right, we have our body mount completely welded on, inside and out. Now this lower gusset plate goes in the bottom here. Um, so I went ahead and sprayed some paint up inside this area first because you won't be able to paint it afterwards. And I also sprayed some paint on the back side of this piece so that it's it's coated on the inside when it goes in. So um, these two pieces that come with the kit are the exact same. You just flop one over for the opposite side. You'll want to install it with this long leg lined up with the long leg on the back of the body mount here. So what we want to do is just push this up into place, bring it all the way forward so this curved part is up against this round tube here. And then we want to create about a, a quarter inch um, of reveal right along the bottom here so we have a nice place to put a bead in the bottom. So this gets recessed up inside about a quarter inch. So I'm going to hold it up there and tack it into place. Oh come on. So we have a gusset plate is tacked in place and we'll just come in close to show you how we have it set up. Um, like I said, we have about a quarter inch of material showing here and we just kind of recess that plate up inside there and now you can go ahead and fully weld all the way around this round tube and down both sides. All right, we've got our body mount completely welded, all finished up and uh, we just let it cool down and then scuffed it up with some scotch bright a little bit just to kind of clean the material and we're ready to get some paint sprayed on everything. So once that's painted, we wanna let that fully dry and then we'll be ready to reassemble the body mount for the final time. So our paint is all fully dry and we're ready to reassemble the bushing. Uh, so we're gonna start with the top piece here, the one with the larger hole in the bottom. We need to put our big washer on top of it and that's gonna slide in between the body and the mount. Uh, but we need to lift the body up a little bit to get that piece in there. Pry up on that a little bit so it can slide in. Then the most important thing here is that you'll need to keep kind of lifting on the body a little bit and look up through the bottom and get your washer and the rubber all aligned perfectly centered on the hole in the body mount. Once uh, that's centered, you can try dropping the bolt in through the top just to make sure that it goes through the washer and everything lines up properly. Go ahead and see if that will go through, Jake. It looks pretty close. Okay, all right. All right, so now that we've got our bolt in, we need to put our lower portion of the bushing in. So this one has the thin metal sleeve on top. We need to make sure that this sleeve slides into the big hole on the body mount because otherwise, if it's not seated properly, you can crush the sleeve with the bolt when you tighten it down. So you want to slide that. You want to put our inner sleeve in there also at the same time. So put that one in with it. Slide that up onto the bolt. And then you might have to lift the body again so you can kind of wiggle that around. So I was having a little trouble getting this sleeve to push up into the hole there and it actually helped to take the bolt back out the top. So we pulled the bolt out and then now we're able to get this to slide right up all the way up into the mount here. And then we're gonna have Jake put the bolt back through for us. So go ahead and put that in while I hold this sleeve together. There we go. 
So once everything's seated in there, then you'll put your other large gold washer on the bottom. And then we have lock nut goes on after that. So you'll need to tighten down the lock nut with an impact. Um, but before you tighten anything down, you want to make sure you take your spacers out or whatever you had set up to hold the body up in position with that extra height. Because if you tighten the bolt, then those are going to be jammed in there. So once more you want to lift, get in there and lift the body. Oh man. Can you pull those out, Jake, while I lift on this? Uh, yeah. Okay. And here I'm going to get a different, different spot. Did I get out of the truck? Try that. Got our spacers out that was holding the body up a quarter inch earlier. Now you can go ahead and tighten your bolt all the way. Um, we usually tighten those to 75 foot pounds. So we've got our body mount bolt tightened down to 75 foot pounds and our driver's side body mount relocation is all installed. The last thing you need to do is just get back inside the truck and reassemble the interior pieces that we took apart at the beginning of the video. Now the installation for the passenger side is going to be the same. The only thing you gotta, uh, it's just a little bit easier actually, since you don't have to worry about any wiring harness being in the way when you're working on the other side. So this video concludes our three part series on how to install our oversized tire fitment kit. If you have any questions about this kit, please email us at info at c4fabrication.com. Otherwise, check the links below for the other two videos in this three part series and for the link to the product on our website. Thank you for joining us.